everyone. Before we proceed and discuss about the topic, which is border irrigation, first let me introduce myself. I am Angelica Jane C. Ordonia, a student of Tarlac Agricultural University, taking up Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Engineering. I will be your presenter for this video lecture. I hope you enjoy and learn a lot from this topic. For this video, we will be discussing about border irrigation under course AING 11, Irrigation and Drainage Engineering. First, uh, let me define what irrigation is all about because basically, this presentation is all about irrigation. So, irrigation may be defined as the process of supplying water by artificial means to agricultural fields for crop production. If rainfall is not enough to water the crops in the field, we use irrigation to supply the insufficiency in water in the field. In doing irrigation, it requires various works that need some knowledge and skills in order to have an efficient, appropriate, and optimal irrigation system. First, here is planning. Planning includes site survey, gathering some information regarding the field location, water source, and crop requirements. Next is design. Design is the complicated part of the process where you have to choose the appropriate irrigation system. This presentation is basically about this part. And next is construction. Construction, this is where the plan becomes tangible. After doing planning and designing, of course, we will construct the irrigation system, the appropriate, appropriate irrigation system in the field. Next is operation and maintenance. Includes the knowledge of how the irrigation system works and of course maintaining its quality and its hydraulic parts. We all know that irrigation has different types. We have surface, subsurface, sprinkler, and drip irrigation. But on this presentation, we will be only focusing on surface irrigation, particularly in border irrigation. In this picture, in this figure, we, we will be able to see how border irrigation works. And this is the actual photo of border irrigation for you to visualize what border irrigation is all about. So here is the inflow. This is where the water supply comes in. And then this is the field, field drain. This is where the water comes out. So we have the field channel over here. And then this is where the water comes in. This is the border strip. On the next slide here, border irrigation. First, we will focus on this image over here. Uh, this is at the top part. This is what we call the head ditch. The head ditch, this is where the water supply comes in. And this is the tail end. This is where the water comes out. This is basically the border strip, this part, and the border width over here, and the border length over here. And this brown part over here is what we call the levee. This is what the what apart the border strips together it 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 situated in between the border strips so uh, first okay so first here best adopted to grain best adopted to grain and forage crops because uh, we all know that green and forage crops are suitable for flooding. There are 
tolerable in wet soil conditions so they are good for this kind of surface irrigation and good for uniform soils with mild slope because we want the water supply the irrigation water to be uniform all throughout the border strip so we only need zero to mild slope in the field and not this is not good for crops sensitive to wet soil condition as i said here on the first part typical efficiencies range from 70 to 85 percent unlike the other this is lower than the other irrigation system that we use today but this is quite also impressive for the field and for the crops major investment is that of land grading or leveling because as i said a while ago we want the water supply to be uniform all throughout the border strip so we need to grade and level the field next is border strip width it the width ranges from 3 to 30 meters and the length ranges from 100 to 800 meters but it depends upon the field location and the quality of the soil and the water source so it has zero side slope and uniform longitudinal slope of less than one percent this small less than one percent and strips have no cross slope next border irrigation so there are also different types of border irrigation we have the level border over here as you can see it is uh, the ground the field is leveled from the head ditch going through the tail end and we have the graded border this has a mile this has mild slope from the head ditch going to the tail end and of course we also have the contour levee where we have where you can see the con the contour levee over here the levee that separates the the border from one another next uh, before we proceed to the designing part of this presentation first let me tell you some of the terms that we will be using on this slide uh, the first is the depletion phase Depletion phase, the time interval between the cutoff of the supply and the complete disappearance of water from the inflow end is called the depletion phase. So from, uh, from, the, cut, cut, from the cutoff time or where we end stop the supply of water until the water disappears from the field. Next is recession phase, the time required to water the water to recede from all the points in the channel starting from the end of the deplet depletion phase so when the depletion phase ends recession phase starts okay we also have here manning's roughness coefficient we all know that computing calculating the the discharge of the irrigation system we use the Manning's formula and we have there the Manning's roughness coefficient a parameter in Manning's equation known known as the Manning's n is used as a measure of the resistance effects that flow might encounter as it moves down the furrow border or basin cut off time cut off time is the time at which the supply is turned off measured from the onset of irrigation next channel length channel length there always exists a certain optimal channel length that would minimize irrigation water losses yet results in acceptable levels of adequacy and uniformity so we have to choose the appropriate channel length to avoid losses okay required amount of application or zr 
This parameter represents the amount of water that needs to be stored in a crop root zone per irrigation to sustain normal crop growth. Uh, this is basically just the crop water requirement, the same as this one. Unit flow rate, unit flow rate at the head end of the channel. So we have the head ditch, as I have discussed a while ago. Uh, the unit flow rate over there and going through the end at the tail end and channel bed slope bed slope is the average slope in the direction of irrigation but basically this is only less than one percent so for this topic we will be discussing about design aspects, design principles, design steps or methodology, hydraulic design, and I will, we will give you uh, an example of border irrigation design at the end of this presentation. First, uh, the design as first is the design aspects. Under design aspects, we have the layout. The border strips are located at that a supply channel or pipeline delivers water to the upper end of the border. This is also suggested that the border strips are constructed parallel to the filed boundary to facilitate the intercultural operations. So the layout, we will be following certain rules here. So it should be located at a supply channel or pipeline that delivers water from the upper end so that the water supply will be continuous all throughout from the head ditch going through the tail end. Next is water source location. It is desirable to choose a water source in the central position of the field to minimize the construction of channel and pipes. So it is um, recommended to put the, the field or to construct the border irrigation nearby where the water source, nearby the water source so that we will, it will cost only it will only cost you not a lot because you don't have to construct a lot of channel and pipes along the field and then border strip width the width of a border usually varies from 3 to 15 meters but it can also be 3 to 30 meters it, I just like what I said a while ago it varies depends on your field condition on your field location depending on the size of irrigation stream available yeah and the degree of land leveling practicable border strip length longer border strip are desirable to reduce the labor and other operating costs yes because if we if the longer the border strip it will not cost a lot of labor and it will not cost a lot of uh, pipes for the construction so it is desirable to have longer border strip on your field design uh, we have here also it also depends on the type of soil you have in your field for in order to determine the border length so we have the sand, loamy sand, sandy loam, clay loam, and clay. So it is really important to know what type of soil you have in your field. So the border length could be 60 to 90 meters, 75 to 150, 90, 90 to 250, 90 to 300, and 180 to 350 meters of border length. Depends on your soil type. Next is stream size. Stream size, the design stream size should be large enough to spread adequate amount of water across the length and breadth of the border. So stream size, this is where uh, 
the water from the water source goes in before it goes down to the border strip. So the stream side, it has uh, the gate where you can open and close it if you want to close and open the irrigation system going to the border strips. And here we also have the soil type, the border slope and the flow per meter of border strip and we use liter per second it will determine the soil type and the border slope will determine how much water will be needing by the field by the crop so by that through that we will be also determine we will be able to determine what stream size do you need for your field so we need to consider really the soil type and the border slope. Next is irrigation time. Irrigation time is the infiltration opportunity time. Later we will be discuss more of this opportunity time because this is really important in designing border irrigation. Uh, basically irrigation time is just the time needs for the crop for the water to infiltrate along the root zone uh, in the field and inflow time the inflow time is calculated assuming that the advance and the recession curves are parallel later we will also be discussing more of this recession and advanced curves and the next is the border ridge height on non-cohesive soils Border, border ridges with a settled height of more than 20 centimeters are difficult to construct and maintain without making them excessively wide. Border ridge height are the like the levee uh, that separates the border strips together from each other. So it should not be, it says here that it should not be more than 20 centimeters because it will be difficult for you to construct and to maintain. And for the next topic is the design principle. The design principle of the border irrigation, it should have all these conditions over here. Uh, equal depth of water should be applied all over the field without causing erosion. The inflow is stopped when water front reaches a particular length of plat so that irrigation of remaining length is completed with water already introduced. Uh, just like what I said a while ago, it should be, uh, you should determine where where to stop uh, the water or what we call the cut off time uh, before it reaches a particular length of the plot if if that water reaches that particular length of the plot it, it you should make sure that the rem the ir remaining irrigation length will be completed even after you stop watering because it will go from the head ditch going to the tail end but it doesn't mean that if you, let's say, you, you already stop the irrigation when the water reaches over here. So there is a very minimal slope, but when it reaches here, we can say that it will go through until here. The reduction of stream size is partially or fully known as catback. The minimize, to minimize percolation losses, the opportunity time should be uniform throughout the plot and also equal to the recession time. Uh, required to put the required depth of water into the soil. Okay. So... For the next topic is the design steps or methodology. In, uh, as I said a while ago, we have the level and the graded border. That is uh, typically 
we use in the field, the level and the graded border irrigation. So in preparing level border irrigation layouts, the designer must know the intake characteristics of the soil. This is what you do in planning. You have to take all this information. Must select a roughness coefficient that is appropriate for the crops. Also, you have you also need to know what your crop requirements and must select the net depth of application or FN to be used as a basis for design. He then must determine one or more of the following. So after taking all this information, you will be able to know this, 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 and this. So length of length of run that can be irrigated with a given stream size at a given efficiency. Stream size needed to irrigate a given length of run at a given efficiency. Maximum flow depth and allowable stream size. So this is how important planning is all about. And this is the main part of designing a border irrigation. So we also need this information in order to uh, choose the appropriate irrigation system for your field. Next is one or more of the following determin determinations is needed for designing a layout for graded, graded border irrigation. So stream size needed to irrigate a given length of run length of run that can be irrigated with a given stream size, maximum flow depth expected with a given stream size, and allowable stream size for a given maximum depth of flow. Just like in the level irrigation border irrigation layouts. We also need this information in order to know and to get this. The stream size, the length, the maximum flow, and the allowable stream size. So for this slide, you can see a graph over here. On this graph, we are able to understand more how the water flow in the irrigation system works. So we can see the four phases over here. We have the advanced, wetting, depletion, and recession phase. Uh, with these phases, we will be able to design the border irrigation that is appropriate to your fields and to your crop requirements. So the advanced phase, it is the time interval from the time you open the irrigation until the water reaches the tail end of the border strip. So this, let's say this is the border. So the time it takes from the, ta from the time that we open the irrigation here until it reaches the tail end over here. That, until the water reaches over here. So the wetting phase, it starts when the water reaches the tail end and the cutoff of inflow. So the wetting phase starts when the advanced phase ends. So when the water reaches over here, it is the time when the water reaches here and the, and from the time we turn off or cut off the inflow or the flow of the irrigation. The depletion time uh, or the depletion phase, it is the time interval from the cut off when we turn off the supply until the first disappearance of water in the inflow or the first appearance of bare soil when the water starts to deplete. So when we cut off the, the irrigation and then when we first see the bare soil over here, that is the depletion time. And the recession phase is when the depletion phase ends. It starts when the depletion phase ends. So it is uh, the time interval when the or the time required to recede 
starting when the depletion ends or the time takes it takes for the water to completely comes out. So when the water completely comes out into the tail end. So that is the recession time. So what is the use of this graph? So here this here until here this of this graph so we can see at the middle it is the time requires for the water to infiltrate into the soil or to for the water to reach the root zone of the crop so this is what we call the opportunity time this part so first requirement and the only requirement to satisfy the other component of your irrigation system it's the, is that it needs the recession curve here and the advanced curve to be parallel at each other as much as possible because all those all those techniques uh, that we need to do in order to be because we can control this one in order for this to be parallel we can control like some components like the border length the water supply the stream size all of these components we are we can control all of this. The farmer can control all of this. And some of these components can, can make changes for the graph. So it, uh, as long as we adjust all of these components, we can make more parallel recession and advanced curves. So this indicates that when the advanced and recession curves are more parallel to each other, it means that you have more uniform flow of water along the field. You have uniform flow of water from the from you have uniform flow of water from the start until the end. So this is the use of this uh, graph. You have to control all of your components in order to have or have values that will make your recession and your advanced curve to be parallel to each other and and next here we have uh, irrigation border irrigation system design assumptions so these assumptions will give us the formula or the equations we need in order to calculate all the needed requirements for the design that you want for your field or the design that is appropriate for your crop and to your field okay first here is the first assumption here is surface First assumption, surface water profiles at TCO or time cut off as well as the TD or uh, depletion time at the beginning of uh, T are straight lines. These are our straight lines. So as we can see on this figure, we can see that the field over here we can see that DD, oh, this is not straight, okay, we can see that this line, that this line and this line up to this line, these are all straight lines. So we will be assuming that all of these lines will be 
straight lines and then next is during during the time of depletion the depth yl and runoff or qr at the downstream and remain constant so again in this figure we can see that this is from this end to this end so this is the start of depletion and this is the end of depletion so we can see here this is the depth or the uh, yl and this is the qr or runoff so it says here in the second assumption that during the time of depletion the depth yl and the runoff qr at the downstream end remain constant so both of this yl and qr are both constant okay and on the third assumption during the both uh, during both td and tr or time of depletion and time of recession sum of infiltration and qr remains equal to pre-cut unit flow rate qr so in here we can say okay let's say that we have here uh, the start of the depletion so this is the field let's say this is the field so here is the q q o and this is where the infiltration and this is this is the QR or the Q runoff. So we can say that the water that goes in here or the QO or the inflow is equal to the water that infiltrates and the water that go, goes in runoff. So that will be the equation over here. And, and then next is, next assumption is the time required from the time cut off to the end of time of depletion is equal to the time required to remove the triangular volume of length L and height yo at constant rate of qo through the both infiltration and runoff so here in our four assum fourth assumption the time required from time cut off to the end of time of depletion is equal to the time required to remove the triangular volume of length l and y yo at constant rate of qo through both infiltration and runoff so this is basically just trying to remove all this triangular part here or the time to deplete. So in order to remove this triangular, uh, triangular, uh, line shape over here is to first we have uh first we have the yo over here this is the yo and then multiplied by the l here the l and then okay let's write yo and multiplied by L divided by 2 it's just basically the triangular part and then this is the uh, the, the triangular part and then when we divide it by the QO this will 
give the time uh, how much time it will deplete so when we say when we add the TCO here it will give us the time of depletion so basically time of depletion is the time we need to from the cutoff to have or to reach uh, to deplete the water from here at the inflow uh, in order to remove this triangular part in this graph so that's it uh, next is the fifth assumption at the beginning of tr it is assumed that the depth changes with distance at uniform rate over the entire length of border which can be expressed as s y l uh, y l t d over l so s y is just the uh, so you can see on this figure s y is just the slope of the water during the recession phase so in order to take the slope of the water we have here it says that your yl and multiplied by the time of depletion over the length of the field or the border strip that will give you the slope of the water so here and then another over here this uh where yl is function of qr at time td and can be evaluated as follows so qr at time of depletion is equals to q naught minus or qo minus infiltration times the length uh, it's also it also uses the it also simplified as the area and multiplied by the Manning's equation over here. So it's just a simple equation. For a border, a, a area is equals to y and wp is equals to 1 and therefore r is equals to y or and is the average infiltration rate meter per second over the length sy becomes like this so we all know that um, r the formula r r is equals to a over P. So when uh, P is equals to 1, so basically R is equals to Y. And this gives this equation right here, the R over here. So SY now becomes this equation. And uh, I can be expressed as a mean of infiltration rate at the upstream and or I in I during the depletion time and at the downstream and so I TD minus TL. So we all know that let's say for example this is the field so td or the depletion time is over here so this is td and this is tl so at the upstream i is equals to td and then the infiltration will now becomes at the end it will becomes td minus 
TL. Okay. In Walker and Skogerbo, 1987, provided an equation for estimating the recession time as follows. So this is the whole equation. TR is equals to time of depletion plus, okay, this numbers over here. Okay, this will be your uh, equation for recession time. Okay, so let's now proceed to the design steps or methodology. So these are uh, stepwise design procedure for free drain borders. So it's a lot of process. First, collect the information related to field characteristics, soil, crop, and water supply. So these are basically the information. These are basically the information that you need in order to uh, calculate the other needed uh, components and requirements for your border irrigation. Uh, next is determine the maximum or your Q max and your minimum or your Q min values of unit inflow rate QO cubic meter per minute per minute using below equation to limit the flow within the non-erosive velocity with sufficient depth of spread laterally. So we need to identify the minimum and your maximum inflow rate or here. So this is your border. You need to uh, know the unit flow rate that will enter into your field or into your border strip so it will be your QO so you need you just need to uh, solve for the maximum and the minimum value so using these equations next select the unit flow rate QO between Q max and Q mean in such a way that it results in a set width that contains an even number of borders of satisfactory width and integer number of sets using below equation. So your width will be equal to your Q, T, and your Q, O. And your number of borders will be equal to your width T and your width O. So by using these uh, values, you can get the number of borders and your width. Okay. And then next is fourth, compute the inflow depth at the inlet in meters using below equation so the in the inflow depth is just basically this the inflow depth is the y o so the in inflow depth is the depth of water when you start when you start opening your irrigation so what is the required or the maximum inflow depth that will be on your uh, will be with your inflow rate okay and then uh, you, you can compute your YO or your inflow depth using this equation over here and then compute the uh, Z rec but you can also use this symbol over here in minute to satisfy the irrigation requirement from the following equation. So, where Zrec is the required depth of infiltration. So, here, uh, Zrec is equals to this equation. You can compute your required depth of infiltration using this equation over here. And compute the time of advance to the end of border TL. So, as we said, uh, the time of advance or the advance time is 
uh, the time that when you start opening your uh, inflow or your irrigation until the time that it reach, uh, the water reaches the end of the border. That is your TL. So it can be computed using this using this equation over here this one and then seventh compute the time of recession in minutes since the beginning of irrigation uh, assuming that the design will meet irrigation requirement at the end of the border so your time required is equal to your time of recession plus your time or your advance time so from the time that you open from the time that you open your irrigation supply until it uh, until the water all comes out from the border so that is the time required for the water to get into the field until it will come out until the water comes out of the field so that is your t rec or required t uh, eighth uh, computer depletion time td uh, by using newton raphson method as follows so first to compute your time of depletion in minutes assume that initial guess of time of depletion your initial time of depletion is equal to your uh, time of recession since your initial time since your time of recession since your time of recession is equal is starts when your time of depletion ends so your initial time of depletion is equals to your time of recession and then Next is compute the average infiltration rate along the border by averaging the rates of both ends at time T1. So both, uh, both the rate, the time of depletion and your time of recession, you can use that to compute your infil average infiltration rate using this equation over here and then compute the relative water surface slope or your SY that is your uh, water slope over here and you can compute this using this equation over here and then compute a revised estimate of depletion time uh, or what we can say we can call it the T2 or this is the revised estimate of the depletion time. So TR minus using all these numbers over here. So you can use this equation to get the revised estimate of your depletion time. And then lastly for step number 8, compare the initial guess with the new computed value. If both values, your T2 and your first value over there, your T1, if both values are equal, then is found and continue with step 9. Otherwise, set and repeat steps B through E. So, when your T1 and your T2 is, are not equal, then you have, to, uh, you have to again repeat the steps B through E. By then, when they are equal, you can now proceed to your... Step 9, which is compute the infiltrated depth of border inlet, that is uh, your ZO, using this equation. So the infiltrated depth at your border inlet, or let's say this, this one, your infiltrated depth in your... Let's see. Your infiltrated depth at so your infiltrated depth at border inlet. So we have here your border, and this is your border inlet over here. And then you have to compute 
the infiltrated depth over here. So that would be your ZO. Using the, this equation, you can compute your CO or your infiltrated depth at border inlet. And then next, compare it with your ZREC. So we have discussed a while ago. Uh, we will compute your ZREC. And now here, compare it with ZREC to determine the status of irrigation. Complete irrigation, your ZO or your infiltration depth in uh, the border inlet. Uh, if it will be a complete irrigation if your if the infiltration depth at the border inlet is equals to is greater than your ZREC. But it will be a deficit irrigation if your ZO is less than your infiltration requirement. Okay. Uh, compute uh, TCO and EA if irrigation is complete as follows. So this is your TCO using this equation. You can compute your TCO or your cutoff time and your EA over here. And then, or your uh, cutoff time and your EA is your application efficiency. So you can compute this too by using these equations. And 11, in case of deficit irrigation, increase the cut of time and compute the new the time of recession value. So first compute the new cut of time by substituting Trec or Zrec in place of TD in following equation. So using this equation, you will be computing your new cut of time because you need to increase the cut of time. Okay? And then compute the average infiltration by substituting, uh, substituting uh, your depletion time is equals to uh, ZREC. Okay, and then compute your SY. Compute your TR by substituting TD is equals to ZREC. So these equations, these uh, uh, this conditions are uh, also on the other steps that are discussed on the first uh, on the previous slides over here so you just need to substitute all the conditions that said over here stated over here and then compute your zl okay or your uh advanced uh, slope no no or your uh, not the slope, I mean the infiltration, depth of the infiltration during your advance period, during the advance phase. So you can compute your infiltration, uh, infiltration depth during your advance phase using this equation. And compute the uh, application efficiency using this equation again. And then last step is check the water availability constraint and repeat steps 4 to 12 for other unit inflow rates. Choose the design which gives the maximum application efficiency value. So that will be your uh, design steps or methodology to do your border irrigation design. So here, let's proceed uh, to the design sample. So design a border irrigation system for the following conditions. So we have these uh, following conditions. So these conditions are what you can get or this information are what you can collect during your first step. Okay, uh, field length or your L, 400 meters, your field width will be uh, uh, 600 meters. So what would be the width of your width of your border, border strips in order to maximize your field length and your field width? 
and how many uh, what uh, what is the number of borders you can get over here and then you have your longitudinal slope or your so and your n or your mannings coefficient roughness coefficient your soil texture is silt design irrigation requirement is five centimeter shape parameters we have your uh, p1 is equals to one and your p2 is equals to 3.33 Infiltration parameters, you have your K over here, your constant, 0.0020A. And your A, these are your constants, okay. Uh, 0.356 and your FO is equal to 0.0017. So available supply rate, so your discharge or your inflow rate can be 50 cubic meters per minute. Okay, and your supply duration will be 12 hours. So using these conditions, let us compute the uh, following the, the, the required components, the required parameters using the uh, design steps or methodology that we have uh, discussed a while ago. Okay, first determine the maximum Qmax and your Qmin limit for unit inflow rate. So we have your Q max over here, and then using uh, using the equation for Q max, we can compute the Q max over here and your Q min over here. So select uh, Q O within the range of Q max and your Q min, considering the unit flow rate. Q max is equals to 0 0.563 cubic meter per minute per meter. Results in border width would be 88.77 meter and 6.75 numbers of borders. So using the your Q max, you will be having your border width of 88.77 meters, and then you will be having uh, 6.75 numbers of borders or your NB. The flow is adjusted, and possible combinations are listed in the table. So these are the possible. Uh, combinations over here since uh, your Q max is 0 0.563 0 0.563 over here so we will be considering the in the table we will be consider uh, this one over here your number of borders will be six and your border width will be 100 meters and your unit flow rate will be 500 Okay, and then compute the inflow depth at YO using the Manning's equation. So we will be using the Manning's equation over here. And you have uh, 0 0.04005 meters for your inflow depth at the inlet. So that would be your inflow depth in your inlet. And then... Y O value should be less than ridge or dike height. Yeah, it should be less than that. So that the water will not come out, will not come out of your border strips, of course. And then, fourth, compute your Z rec or your T rec. Okay. To satisfy the irrigation requirement using the same procedure as used in the case of furrow design. Uh, using this, uh, using the equation, we can have 187.89 minutes. Okay. And then, and then next, compute the time of advance to the end of border. TL in minutes using the same procedure as used in the case of far of design. Uh, this step will be on your the equation discussed a while ago. So your TL could be 34.78 minutes. And then compute the time of recession. Use, assuming that the design will meet the irrigation requirement at the end of the border. So your time of recession, as we all know, is the value of this, the sum of the value of this, and the value of this. So it will give you 220.78 
minutes. Okay. And then, seventh, compute the depletion time in minute using the newton raphson method as follows. So, this first, the initial guess, as we said, your time of depletion as your initial time of depletion is equal to your time of recession, which is equal to 220.78 minutes. And then, compute the average infiltration by substituting TD is equal to your initial TD. So, we can compute your infiltration, your average infiltration using that equation and we can get this answer. 0 0.000203 cubic meter per minute per meter. And then we have here SY or your slope, water slope. So compute using this equation and then you can get this value. And then compute the new uh, time of depletion or your depletion time using this equation over here. These equations are discussed on the design steps. And then we can get result of 166.44 minutes and then lastly the initial guess tdi is equal to 220.78 minute is not close to the new computed which is 166.44 therefore set your uh, time of depletion your initial time of depletion is equal to 166.44 minute and repeat steps b through e so, correct value of TD is equals to 167.5 minutes. You can get this value when you repeat the steps B through E. So, the correct value of TD is this one. And then, compute the infiltrated depth at border inlet CO and compare it with your Zurich. So, your ZO or your infiltration depth. Uh, in, in in your inflow or inlet border inlet would be equal to 0 0.0456 meters uh, since the infiltrated depth at end zo is equal to 0 0.0456 is less than is less than your zeric it is a case of deficit irrigation so deficit we said a while ago that if your zo is less than your zeric that would be a deficit irrigation and you need to decrease your cutoff time. So here on the next slide, uh, in case of deficit irrigation, increase the cutoff time and compute the new recession time. So following letter A, compute the new cutoff time by substitution, uh, substituting TREC in place of TD using this equation and then you will get a uh, you will get a result of 171.87 minutes and compute the average infiltration I by substituting TD is equals to TREC. I is equals, you can compute your I using this equation and you will have a result of 0 0.00206 cubic meter per minute per meter. And compute again your slope, your water slope using this equation. Uh, and you will have a result of 0 0.00249. And then, for your 10th uh, step, in case of deficit irrigation, since we have a deficit irrigation, increase the cut of time and compute the new recession time. Uh, yeah, and then we will just continue. So, letter D, compute. Uh, your recession, recession time by substituting your depletion time is equals to TREC. So you will just substitute your TR, uh, your TD is equals to your TREC, required time. So your recession time, your new recession time will be 254.25 minutes. So compute your uh, infiltration depth or your ZL uh, during your advanced phase and you will get a 
you will get a result of 0 0.0568 meters. So compute your application efficiency using this equation and you will get an application efficiency of 23.27. So we said that as much as possible, we should get the uh, highest possible uh, application efficiency. And 11th, your last step, check the water availability constraint and repeat 4 to 12 for other unit inflow rates. Choose the design which gives maximum, uh, maximum application efficiency value. So here you will get, as you can see, the number of borders over here, here, and you can get different values also of different values of application efficiency in percentage, of course. Uh, so it's up to you. It's up to you to choose the best. Uh, irrigation irrigation design that will be suitable and appropriate to your field and so for this uh, for this design for this uh, for the given conditions for this design sample this is the uh, we have created a, a three-dimensional design suitable for the computed values over here suitable conditions that are given on the design samples over here so this is the photo and that concludes our discussion regarding border irrigation i hope you learn a lot once again, I am Angelica Jane C. Ordonia, an acknowledgement for my groupmates and to our instructor, Engineer Catherine D.C. Poyo, and to everyone, thank you and stay safe. Adios.